Okay, so remember the Schoology. You can view any of the videos clicking my link there. The if there's any question about what things are due, remember the assignment schedule there. And I'm trying to remember to go and actually set the schedule over there. Schoology because it's I'm hearing it's easier for students to see it on the calendar in Schoology and synchronize that to your calendar. So I will do that. And bug me, don't be ashamed to send me a reminder. Mr. Manning, could you please update the Schoology schedule? Although it's kind of a pain for me, if it helps you to better know what things are doing, I don't that. So here we are. We're a little behind. We wanted to start PowerPoint on Monday, but it's so easy. I think we can get through that module one today. So let's go ahead and start PowerPoint. Remember how it's done? The Windows key, just start typing PowerPoint. There we go. PowerPoints, spelled right, PowerPoint, and PowerPoints 2016 desktop app. And we're going to start a new presentation with front of look like a little poster like this. I can uh, that chapter right. Uh, presentation with pictures. Here's what it's going to look like. It'll look something like that. We're going to just create some bulleted list of pictures, adding some cool effects with images. And that's what PowerPoint is all about. Presenting a point, presenting material with lovely visuals. For those visual learners and more people in the audience, people that just need to be entertained, your generation. Not all you generation. It was my generation too. The Sesame Street kids. They that was the entertainment for kids to learn. So PowerPoint, where did it go? PowerPoint. Starting a new blank presentation. And right away we're going to choose a theme. I think we have that at the very start. So we have a blank presentation. So we're going to now select a theme for our presentation. Remember how to get to the themes? Well, if you haven't seen this before, it's under the design tab. There's our design ribbon. And we can choose themes and variants on the theme. Themes up here, variation once you choose the theme. So if I chose this theme, the variance part would change, showing me the various variants. And if there's more to see, I can Click on this little tiny down arrow to see more variants on that theme or adjust the colors and effects. So let's find the theme that they want us to use. Let's see here. I think there's enough in this one that they do they do mess with. Yeah, let's try to use the one that they give and then uh, and future ones I might let you choose a theme. But, but, but for this one, I think there's enough things that so let's go ahead with the Berlin thing. Now, how do I find the Berlin thing? I wish that they would let a, let me search for a name. I don't know the name of the thing until I have, have to cover over it. So let's see here. Oh, actually, they started it with a new thing. I could choose the theme even after I started one. Yes, sir. Yep. There I can browse for themes. Or I see the Berlin right there. That's the one. I think it's better to know how to change your theme once you've started one. You can start it and choose a theme at the very start. But remember, the theme affects everything, how things are placed on the page. So choose your theme at the start. Don't wait till later because things will really get messed up if you intended some text to, to be uh, showing up right and you carefully place it. When you change your theme, it actually does change the placement of many of the objects in your presentation. I'm going to show you eventually actually how to edit the master slides, but we'll work with the theme right now, choosing Berlin. And notice there are color variations on the Berlin. And we're going to choose the green variant of Berlin. Just to give us practice with this particular one, 
in future ones, I'll be giving you more flexibility because I want you to go wild in your creativity, having fun with all the various very uh, themes available to you. But for this one, let's, well, I guess we'll stick with the ones. And, but I might give you some creativity on some of the stuff inside of it. So you could have created it from the start, or like I showed you, from the blank presentation, and you can always change it anytime. Just be careful about changing. So in our title, we're going to enter Autumn Family Program. This is a special placeholder. As soon as I click on it, the text goes away, and it's waiting for me to fill in the content. This is based on the themes layout of a title slide. And every title, every presentation should have an introductory title slide. And it does some spell checking for you. If I type something wrong, I should see once I leave that word. Oh, it's not showing me red squiggles. There, finally it does. It'll show me the red squiggles if I have it. Done. Down to the placeholder, just clicking on that. And the subtitle I'm going to enter will be Powell Oaks Nature Center. So clicking on another placeholder, Powell Oaks Nature Center. Now, I do not like the size of that font. I think that's horrible size of font. Let me just play this one slide just to see how it would look if I present it. To play from where you are, I can hit the I can hover over here, slideshow. Does it show me the shortcut? It doesn't show me the shortcut. I think Shift F5. F5 will start my whole presentation. Here, since it is the first slide, it doesn't make a difference. I think that font is kind of small. I'm a fan of make the fonts as big as you, as are reasonable, not gigantic and horrible looking. If I think of font, if I do control A while I'm inside that placeholder, and I'm gonna do a control shift greater than a few times. Make it a little bigger, since it is a subtitle, it doesn't need to be as big of a title. There's so many people, and you will see this sometimes even in presentations in chapel, by very experienced people, that the text is just too small to read. This one I'm gonna hit F5. I think that's a little re more readable. I would recommend, and they recommend basically about seven lines on a slide is the right font size. As you get larger than seven, start thinking maybe I should split this up into multiple slides. If you really want to be readable, if it's just there to show some unreadable text to make it seem like you're really smart, go ahead. But you aren't really going to be able to read or remember what you actually have on the slide. Okay, so that's our first slide. And I can zoom in and out, zoom, or the control, roll, click the mouse. Now we can adjust the font, and they want us to make that text in the subtitle. We're going to make that italicized. So I can select that, triple click. And click italics right there to adjust the effects on that font. Remember though, if I ever change themes, watch what happens. If I change the theme, oh, it does remember. I thought it might not remember my italic size. Those E, I can go back there. Next. Some changes you make go away when you change it. Oh, and they actually did increase it to 30, so what did I to change my I'd like. Well, 32, they actually wanted us to go to 36. I thought they could select all and delay. I'm going to go to exactly 36, one size bigger. And if I want to center that or do anything other other alignment, that's my, I'm in the control once I create the slide. Now, the autumn, we're going to want to apply a lovely color to that. We're going to apply a custom or a uh, standard color yellowish to the word autumn. 
So we'll double click on Autumn. And I have the font colors up here, my mini toolbar, or I could go up to the home tab. I'm going to change that font color. Instead of one from the color table that would change if I change my theme color, I could pick a standard color and it will never change, even if I change my color scheme. So theme colors or standard colors. Now that's a fixed standard color, a yellowish. Remember with PowerPoint, what you see on your screen may not look the same on the projector with where you're presenting. So be careful to practice on the projector where your report presentation is happening. If there's an important slide that you don't want to get messed up, make sure it's readable. With older projectors, they can get really bad and not be able to display your color and nothing to do with it. Anyone notice the Hands on Monday, that, that text in the middle is not very good. So Colin was directing, you remember that? I thought it was a little washed out. I, I knew the song, but it was like a light blue, light, light letters on it, got light blue to the upper left. And that's something that maybe on the computer screen, it looked perfectly fine. But that projector wasn't quite, at least from where I was doing it, it was hard to see. And that's hard, that's hard to figure out. So have some appreciation for the AD people. Because there's a lot of work going into that, and there it's amazing what they do under pressure. And everyone's, everyone's turning around looking at them, and there's one little delay. They do a fine job. Okay, so now we're adding a new slide, and so I can come up here, new slide, or my favorite key, Control M, will start a new slide. And look at that, it was a title slide. It changes to a new format of slide. This is the pretty standard slide. This is called a, a title with content formatted slide. If I ever want to change what kind of slide that is, I can go to the layout section right up here and choose one of the other layouts, like a title, section leader, two content, and we'll be doing that later on. If I just want a new slide, give it let PowerPoint guess what kind of slide I'm on. I can hit Control M with that. Or I hit the little down arrow and I can tell it what kind of new slide I want next. But the title of content is what we want. And we're putting here some text. The title will be Morning Bird Walks. Take your morning bird walk, yes. Even in the winter, you can take a morning bird walk. Here's those surviving birds. And now we're going down to the next text box and entering the wonderful things we can do on our morning bird walk. By clicking there, enjoy. Natural surface chaos. Things we can do at the Oak Ridge, Oak River Center, Talos. Trail, not trials, trails. Tab in to uh, lower your presentation priority here. Approximately, I don't think that's a great choice of color. I'm thinking that's a little unreadable there. I'll go with it for now and hoping that they'll change this. If they don't, I'm gonna get set. I can hit I can tab in again for another second uh, layer paragraph further in or I can shift tab to decrease my this level. Let's see what we're doing here. Yes we're going we're going in one more level to Oh no, actually going out of level. Uh, shift tab takes me out of level. Now I can put in my time. 9 a and there's a Saturday. Enter tab to go in one invitation level. Bring those binoculars. Some speculate that the one of the reasons that Titanic sank 
was they only had one pair of binoculars to look for uh, icebergs, and they were locked up. The guy before forgot to get them. I'm pretty sure that that is not very readable. I'm going to hit F5 to see how that would look. It's a little readable, it's getting bigger, but I might be modifying that, at least making it bigger. I think that's getting a little bit small. Every Saturday, we're going to make that a little bit bigger. You have control over individual text. Control shift greater than, and make it as big as you want. This is where I'm going to let you make it big as you want. They say they suggest uh, what was it? 24 points. You can make it even bigger. If you want. And any of these other words in here, feel free to emphasize. I I kind of like that effect. Uh, with the words, I think I'm going to make everything a little bigger. Control A, Control Shift greater than keeps it will enlarge them all one step more. Kind of a nice way to enlarge that. Most every Saturday still stays bigger than the other text. So you have some flexibility here in your graphics, and you can even be obnoxious because this is about learning the features of PowerPoint. Oh, they also they also bolded every Saturday. So let's go back to that. Control B to bold it. it looks like they even have a little drop shadow there. All right, so we're going to add another slide now using our gallery layout, we're going to use a title with, or a comparison slide. So I started a new slide by hitting Control M, but I'm going to choose the, the, that slide's layout. Remember up here, I can change my layout to a comparison. There's my comparison. Did you know that even with a slide selected, you can change its layout and then change it back. And see how see how when I change the layout, it packs everything there into one text box. Going back, it puts it back in one text box. <coughs> so you can adjust your layout even after you've entered content. But you can see it will mess things up a little bit. So we're making a comparison slide, and we're getting ready now to enter some content to our comparison slide. Oh, we're going to identify some insects. We're going to add some pictures here. Getting a little boring. No pictures yet. Your, your visual learners are falling asleep. Got to get some pictures in there. So we're bringing the title of some of our insects we're going to describe in our exciting one walk grasshopper. AKA and some more exciting bugs and dragonflies. I'm going to take for those as down to the bar. It looks like we're going to add another slide and then come back and add some content using these little placeholders. So we're leaving this blank for now, adding another slide. This time, instead of just hitting Control M and changing the format, I can choose my new slide right, right away with what time I'm going to add. So I'm going to choose this time a title only slide. New slide, title only. To give me some flexibility of drawing my own things, drawing my own graphics. And the title that we're going to put here, Twilight. 
firefly eyes. I think we'll be getting free and some fun graphics. Oh, I'm gonna make any more excitement. I'm gonna exclamation mark. Oh, now it's my turn. Now, at this point, just to give you some practice, oh, something I have forgotten to do. I forgot to save the save button. I'm gonna do a control S before I go any further. Make sure that the save in my in my special spot one my CS 101 content here. This one alone. I'm gonna do my. I'm gonna call this Manning PPT one or PowerPoint Mafia one. And I'm leaving the rest of that title in there. Autumn Family Programs. I'm happy with that. So PowerPoint guesses the title of your document based on what it sees on your title slide. But I can always change that. Now I'm gonna continue. Now that I'm and we'll have to save that. So at this point, the book says, okay, let's go, let's change our theme now. After we chose the theme at the start, I guess we weren't that sure. Now, we're going to change it to a new theme. So remember, that's under design. Themes, and the theme we have is this little crazier one with a tilting title right there called Main Event. When we apply this theme, or actually when we hover over it, we see what it's going to do to us. Remember, we can also choose a color variant of the event. Looks like we're going with the default color. Nope, nope, they go to the green variant. That's not good. One page they show choosing that. But now we're going to go for the green variant of that, just because we're talking about nature things. Thus, the autumn word stayed the standard color. It did change colors like everything else. Like, remember how we had selected the color of autumn to be a standard color, not in the color table that will be changed by my theme. Okay, so back to my Twilight Firefly types. Now that we've changed our theme. We can adjust our views. I remember about that. Browse around through our through our presentation. We're going to insert a picture. It looks like we're going to go to that first page and we're going to insert a picture of our autumn leaves. So let's go to our main slide here. And we're going to insert a picture. Now I gotta go find that picture from my data files. And then after this one I'll let you choose your own. But let's make sure we know how to find those data files pictures. And I wanna make sure I put them in the right place. So I'm gonna to go to Schoology. Remember that under Schoology, they are where are the pictures? There, student online companion. Remember though they were over there under the data files. And here are the data files for module PPT module one. And download those to my folder over here. I'm putting them in my CS101 folder. There's my oh that's some some strange name. I choose PowerPoint module one zip file. Now I'm going to give it a na better name than 130 some number. I'm going to call PPT1 dash, and then I'll give it that number. And as it's downloading, it shows up at, in the bottom on my tab here. And I can just click on this little arrow, go to open, sorry, go to show in folder. And I see that in my folder over there. Remember, I can, oh, it's still downloading, I have to wait for it to play. Now it shows as a zip file. I can right click, extract all, and I click extract after seeing where it's going to be putting them. 
And now let's see what's down in there. There's all my pictures. Now I can go back to PowerPoint and do the insert. Actually, I wonder if I can drag and drop that. Let's try that. Let's try the easy way. Got PowerPoint here. Let's see. It will let me drag that out of my picture. Looks like that'll do that. Drag that picture. So I could go to the insert and then browse over to it, but the drag and drop is nice. And that's a picture that's taking over my whole screen. And I guess we're going to come back and adjust this picture later. So they leave it covering everything up for now. Well, we're going to come back to it. They, they have us go to the slide two and drag in the owl picture. And they do the insert and browse to the list. I'm going to drag and drop the owl picture. I'm going to go here, find my owl picture. There's my owl picture. I'm going to drag that and drop it. Oh, one thing they did, if you have a placeholder, it will make, and you say insert with that placeholder selected, it will insert inside the placeholder. All right, so we've got two pictures yet. We need to do some adjusting yet. But we're going to go to slide three and show a different way to enter pictures. Remember, we have this comparison, and we have these convenient icons here for us to allow us to uh, select and also fit within that box. So if I go here to the picture, I'm going to try something. I wonder if I drag it to that, would it fit it? Let's try that. Uh, we're looking for a picture. I have to do it. Uh, it's going to be a grasshopper picture. Let's find my grasshopper. I'm going to experiment. I haven't tried it before. There's my grasshopper. Let's see if I drag that to the icon, whether it will fit. Uh, it doesn't look like it's recognizing my icon. I was hoping it would say, oh, if you drag it here, I'll fit within that box. Oh, it did. Look at that. So if you drag it to the icon, it will fit it, even though it wasn't indicating it would as I drag it. And the other one we're dragging the grass. Here's the grass dragonfly. Let's try that again. Drag it to the icon right there, and it should fit within that box. Isn't that nice? And no, I'm not going to turn on the services. I don't trust Microsoft to not take all my private information. It's not down. Wasn't that cool? I can drag it right to the icon, and it fits it within that box. Have you been able to find all your files? Data files? Any questions, Ken? Uh, unless you, you're going to need the files eventually. Unless you can see, you don't see them, you, they may put them in your download folder, but yeah, we'll need them eventually. Yeah, we just, I think we just did the word before. So that's why. And some books, they have them all in one big zip file. This one, they have them in separate data files. All right, and pause for a second here. We've got the files from there. We're back in PowerPoint. We've got the, at least the grasshopper in the grass, dragged to that icon, showing up in there. And on the very last slide, we're not going to have a placeholder. We're going to we're going to adjust this image, and I'm going to drag the grasshopper image over. Or actually, it's the Firefly image. Now remember, I could do insert and then browse to where my files are, or drag them in. since they're right there in view. I can go ahead and drag that Firefly. 
And there's all different types of image formats. Some of them are uh, allow more features such as adjusting colors to be available to this. You really don't know until you actually try what you can do in the picture. All right, so we've got our pictures on each of the four slides. Now we're going to adjust our pictures. So we've got one, two, three, four slides. Coming back to that first slide, and what we want to do is have that picture appear a little better, not be blocking all our content here. I'm going to do select that picture and resize it a bit. If I drag a corner, see how it keeps its proportion? If I drag an edge, it will shrink the picture. And where do we want this? Resize it. I guess we make this quite a bit smaller. And I'm going to rotate it a little to match the rotation of that slide. And I'm going to drag it over. And don't worry if it falls off the edge of your slide. That just means it won't be seen when we show the slide on the screen. So that edge is will be cut off on that. Now this is where you can have some creativity. You can adjust this slide to your own taste on how it's placed there. I kind of like the, the effect of tipping it to match the angle of the current text by grabbing that little rotate button there. With the owl picture, I think we're just placing them over on the right side. I'm going to zoom out just a bit so I can see my whole slide. I'm going to put that owl over on the right. And I'm going to squish them a little bit. They, they like to place them right in the middle. Bottom of the picture, that's right. They, they take the bottom of the picture and bring it up. See how the owl is being squished disproportionately? Whenever I grab the middle sizing button, it'll, it won't keep the port. But notice the little red line showing up in different places. That's telling it it's aligning with something else on the screen. And I don't know what that is, so I'm bringing it down, manually aligning it to the I want to get exact alignment. I can zoom in, bring my slider down, of course, slowing down. I can zoom in, get the exact alignment. If that's that super important. Yeah, I think you did a job there. Similar to what I did, except they put their picture in a slightly different spot. 
on this slide, they brought the picture down here. You can decide if you want it there or there. Lines up here, probably. Now, the closing slide is basically a duplicate of our first slide with just uh, the adjustment to the title. Now, here's a quick way to make a duplicate of a slide. Over here in the slide browser, click and start dragging, but then hold down the control key. And it will make a copy and let and drop it to wherever you drag it. Control drag drags a copy. And I'm just instead of duplicating and then dragging, I'm doing that all at once by dragging with the control key. Now this is a new slide, a copy of that one, duplicate of that one. And we can adjust the text and that one. And what we're putting there is register for family programs. We want to remind them to register. So deleting the autumn word, because I don't want my new word to be yellow. Deleting that and typing in register for. And now I see, oh, I better get my spelling right. Register for family programs. Now I see. I can't put the picture where I had it before. I'm going to try to line it up nicely. And I kind of like it going off the screen. I'm going to do that. Oh, it's making that. We're going to learn how we can apply even better color uh, picture effects. But, we've got five minutes. See if we can pull this down in five minutes. So we've got our content, images, drag and drop our images. Oh, I've got a problem here. It's covering up that word. I'm going to right click and send to back. So I'm not blocking that word. Card. I could just as well have trumped that over so it's easier to read. I think that actually looks better. So I'll bring that over to drag that in. Now suppose I want particular transitions. This is something that every version of Office they give you, they always say, oh, look, a lot more cool transitions with PowerPoint. I think they spend most time updating PowerPoint. To apply transitions, I select any slide, and there is a transitions tab that I can choose. And I can apply one by one a transition to each slide. Or I can just say, pick one and apply it to all. They go and find the wind transition. Actually, they start on that last slide. Let's go to that last slide just so we'll match how to get it. They go to that last slide and they find the wind transition. Find the wind transition. There's the wind transition underneath exciting. If I like that wind transition, I can say apply to all. And I can choose my duration, make it last a little longer, change the duration to three seconds. Because it's such a cool transition, we'll let our audience uh, see it a little longer. And do they, do they say apply to all? Yes, they do apply to all. Now that we love that wind transition, made it a duration of three, we can even make the wind blow sound. How about that? Let's see if I can do the wind. Let's do a breeze sound. Oh, there is a wind sound. Now I'm going to do apply to all. You can apply to all anytime. And to actually see it, I could hit F5 to play my presentation. I did win. You can choose another sound that you so desire. Then manually page the slides. And we don't need to print it out. This one is done. All right, we got caught up. Kind of breeze through a few things.
things here we could spend more time on as we work on the second project. We'll dwell a little bit more on some of the fancier features, some of the techniques that you should follow. You're welcome to uh, add other pictures beyond this. There's ways to rotate this bug if you want this rotated. And we'll learn how we can make this little bug animate and crawl across our page. We'll play with that next time. So that one, you're ready to save and upload. I'm saving mine. A quick I'm hoping you've all seen this already, so we're going to get on to the more fancy features that uh, will make you guru PowerPoint. This one's done. Yeah. Five slides. We're just learning to play with pictures. We'll be doing more picture formatting on uh, future work. The pictures are the thing that bothers us.